Hello and welcome to the Lewis Nichols Show and we've got a brand new reunion that we're bringing you today and I'm really excited. Um, it's for the stars of the House of Elliot and we're welcoming back our friend of the show, the brilliant Vicky Orcock. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having us. It's great to have you back on. Thank you so much. Another reunion for you. But let's say hello now to lovely Judy Flynn. Thank you for coming on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for asking. Yeah, hello. You, you still look so much like Madge. Like when you came on, I just couldn't believe how similar. Like you still look exactly the same. Oh, actually, because I, I think I've got a bit of a twenties blouse on. Maybe I was unconscious. Sort of, <laughs> of um, it's got. A, I think it's got a tear in it as well. So, which I haven't sewn. So. <laughs> No, thank you so much for coming on. And the brilliant, I'm really excited, Stephen Churchill, thank you for joining us today. It's my absolute pleasure. Brilliant, thank you. And brilliant Aidan. Well, it says John on the screen, so I was really confused. But Aidan, who of course played the brilliant Jack Maddox, thank you so much for coming on. You're very welcome. And then Vicky, we're reuniting you with your lover, Peter Lovstrom, of course, who was on the show as your other half. My Percy, is it? My Percy. Yeah. Per <laughs> per Percy the Dick. <laughs> That's that, dip. That was <laughs> dip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the brilliant Kathy Murphy, of course. Um, everyone's my one of my favourite characters, Tilly. Just so lovable and adorable. Uh, so, what's it like for you all to see each other? Because it's been such a long time since you worked on the show. It's lovely. <laughs> it's been so. Well, some of us have been. Well, we've all sort of kept in touch. Uh, you know, a little like network and stuff. So, you know. I'm, seeing Cab and Pete and that and uh, we've kept in touch but uh, we had a little meet up yesterday and we haven't seen each other for ages and it was just well for me it was just like picking up where we left off like there wasn't any gaps and the banter and everything and the, and the, um, the antics it was just wonderful and it's so nice to see everybody. So when going back to when the show first started I guess you all had to audition uh, for the part so can you actually remember that process and remember the audition day uh, so we go over to, to Judy can you remember your audition? Um, I can't I remember going I think it was at White City I didn't go to White City yeah um, so I remember not, but not it was centre, weird not the Sorry? television centre not the television centre but it was different it all looked so different then and everything and um I, I, it's weird because I was doing a job at, at the BBC then and I remember seeing the sort of House of Elliot table because I thought, oh, that's a bit grand over there. And I thought, I'd love to do something like that because I've never done anything like that. And, um, and then I got an audition for it. It was so weird. It was almost like the next day. It was just weird. And I went, I went up for it and um, I thought, all right. And then I got called back. And I was so nervous and I was so nervous. I really wanted it. And, um, and the guy on the desk, I said, oh God, I'm, you know, I'm really nervous. He said, don't worry, they're only seeing you today. So I know it sounds back up show, but I was so, I just relaxed and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm all right then and everything. Yeah. So I thought if I don't mess it up with, it was, Jer was it Jeremy we met? In fact, was it Jeremy, Jeremy Quilt? Quilt, yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, because I, I, I thought, anyway, that was how I got it. But I was, you know, it was just fabulous, yeah, to get it. Oh, yeah. What about anyone? Does anyone else have any kind of memories of their audition or any story that kind of surrounds it that you can tell us about? Well, I do. But it, I mean, it's very un, un, it's unmentionable, but it's unremarkable, really. I mean, I just went up for this interview. I knew when I read the script, I thought, I'm absolutely dead right for this. <clears throat> there was another actor waiting whose name I can't remember, who I thought, yeah, you're actually right for this too. Um, but anyway, I went in second. And I think that afternoon or the next morning, the agent phone said, yeah, they want you. It's an offer. So it was painless in that point of view. But I knew reading the script that it was, the part was right up my street. And the scripts were so strong as well. When you watch from the, the very first series, there was, um, with the character development, that's what I loved going forward because, we, you know, with Madge, Agnes, you got to see uh, so many different sides uh, of the characters. But there's a storyline that I wanted to actually talk to Kathy uh, about uh, because, Kathy, in the show, you were so lovable. People really related to you. You were so genuine, had a heart of gold. Um, 
so what did you firstly, what did you think of the, when you read the, the scripts and you got an understanding of the character, what were your thoughts? I thought exactly that. I thought she was lovely. She was so opposite to, to the, the girls who are beautiful and stylish. And I think she was one of about 48 children, Tilly. Um, <laughs> she was terribly working class and terribly, what you see is what you get. And I like that about her. I like the fact she didn't have a filter and she hadn't been around posh people. So she just said it as it, as it was. Um, but with regards to the storyline, I don't know if you all found that, but what a lot of the time the writers did was they seen how we reacted as as actors and as people to each other and and they would kind of entwine that in storylines you notice that like if you yeah. got on particularly well like we got on really really well so they'd like like funny little camp storylines that sort of had bits of our personality in them and, and joseph became quite camp and and, and i don't know, know why <laughs> and, uh, i always remember there was a, a brilliant storyline with me and aiden where um it was, you kept giggling because he had this letter. I had this letter and I kept trying to get him to read it. And he was going, I'm too busy, Tilly, you read it. And then it dawned on him that I couldn't read. Because <laughs> 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 so I was going, oh, please read it, please read it. And we, we just couldn't get through that without a straight face. And, and, and so I think they incorporated a lot of our personalities into the writing. Um, my, my, my boost in screen time for series three was, do you remember the House of Idiot? Did you ever oh. see that? You know this, Lewis. Have you heard of this? No. Yes. The House of Idiot it. was Dawn French, Jennifer Saunders spoof of the House of Elliot. It was very, very, very funny. <laughs> um, Louise playing Tilly character, going, um, oh, no, we've run out of Velcro. No. <laughs> it was very funny, and Kathy Burke was in it. But anyway, yeah. my character was played by another actor. All he had to do in this spoof, he'd come up those two little stairs to the office and say, oh, Miss Elliot. And Stella would say, uh, thank you, that'll be all, Joseph. And I'd go out. <laughs> That's what noted, because the next series, I did get to stay in the office for more than, thank you, Joseph, that'll be all. <laughs> thank you, <Dawn> Jennifer. <laughs> it's very funny, Lewis. It's, so it's French and Saunders spoof and... It sort of includes everybody and, and um, Kathy's character, you know, Kathy Burton. It was just absolutely brilliant. So it's worth watching The House of Idiots. Yeah, did you Tilly's Tilly character in, in the spoof have two Chelsea buns stuck to her, <laughs> yeah. stuck, stuck to her ears yeah. to make it look like her hairstyle? I need to check this out, definitely. It yeah, it's very good. It's good, it's fun. So, um, uh, Kathy, as well, obviously you had a lot of fun uh, and uplifting storylines, but there was a, a storyline which I, I thought was a really um, sad and, and tragic storyline, which was, of course, with um, Tilly's baby. Now, when you watch the show over the series, you fall in love with the character of Tilly, and you wanted to have this happy ever after and just be happy. Um, and then when she lost the baby, it was a really tragic story. So what, what was that like for you to film? Because that must have been difficult as an actor to, to go and film something like that. It was as well because I was young and I had no experience of children. I mean, now I've got two girls and I, I know the pain of that would be it's, um, unbearable. And it was, it was tight. It, was, it, was, it wasn't easy um, 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 to, to do that because I was young. Um, and it was a really harrowing storyline and it was a very different Tilly. I think for the whole of that series, it was a very different Tilly. And, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was it was sad. It was really sad. The storyline was horrible, and, and her breakdown with her lovely marriage to um, Norman, who's such such a lovely yeah. actor. And, and so, yeah, it, it was um, it, it was a, it was a tough one. The last series, it was tough. It was tough in lots of ways because it, it, I don't know if you've seen the end, but it was all very open ended. It, it ended really strangely, didn't it? The house of mm. it came to a really inconclusive conclusion. Um, so even though I got that with Norman, I kind of, you know, we left House of Elliot and no one knew what was going to happen to all our characters. But yeah, that, it, it was pretty harrowing to play because of my age. I think I'd handle it a bit better now. Okay, I'm going to come on to the ending of the show uh, later because it'd be great to get your um, opinions. But now to the man of many careers, um, from politician, photographer, filmmaker, it's the brilliant Aidan, of course, Jack oh, that's Maddox. Me. <laughs> uh, Aidan, what did you think of the character? Because he was such a lovable, genuine guy. You know, he liked to help people out. He, he didn't take himself too seriously. So what were your thoughts on, on uh, getting to portray this I character? think that was me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it's awful. I, 
I, I, um, perhaps I shouldn't confess, well, I will confess it, but I've never actually seen an episode of The House of Elliot. I, that was less to do with The House of Elliot and more to do with me just not being able to cope with watching myself. And I just yeah. felt like I'm going to either commit suicide or burn my equity card if I ever see myself again. And, and I, I felt that way before I did The House of Elliot. So, so I wasn't, you know, 30, what is it, 34 or 36 episodes we did? 34. Yeah, so I wasn't, so it's, I, I can't remember much about it, is the truth. Um, and I, when we started, I, I didn't actually know we'd start, oh no, I'm not going to come out of this well. We did, we did one of those days, yeah, we, I didn't really know we'd started. I, I didn't really understand that we were filming. We just had a day where we didn't have any dialogue. We just got in, the, you know, those cars. We were always in those cars, <laughs> either being pushed along in them or something. We just spent a day in cars and we didn't have any dialogue. We just sort of talked to each other. And uh, it all felt a bit surreal. And I, I remember thinking, is this, is this like a, an audition or is this it? Right. Um, I, we were all quite inexperienced at the time. I mean, Kathy, Kathy was saying that and I, I was no different. Sorry. You didn't notice the camera or anything like that. This was the camera. Yeah, they, they were just filming us in cars. <laughs> <laughs> it, was an, it was an odd day, um, but it was my first day. And then I didn't see anyone for like two weeks. And I thought, well, maybe that was it. You know, maybe that's gone. It felt more like an audition. But it was actually an entire series <laughs> on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to think of it, it was a three-year thing. Because yeah. <laughs> we used to like we used to um, rehearse like for two two weeks, wasn't it? I think, and then and then film two weeks. But we then spend some time. I might think that, and then we film in Bristol, and then obviously then at, do filming at White City as well. So it was constant. Wasn't it? You know, we we had that luxury of being able to rehearse and and you know which we don't get now or anything. And so you know we were constantly going but sometimes yeah you wouldn't know if it was filming or not Aidan. Yeah it was the last, well thank you bless you. It was the last of those series that was filmed in that way of multi-cameras mm. and you'd do all rehearsals in a rehearsal room with sets marked out with tape on the floor and then you would go away for a couple of weeks to Bristol or more for location stuff and then back to Television Centre to do the scenes you would rehearsed in London so it was an odd it was the last of the shows that were done that way because there's no uh, I remember I remember being I didn't I'm so Kathy's with me and Judy but I remember being in the um uh, rehearsal rooms right and absolutely fabulous with uh, rehearsing next door do you remember this right and we and a lot of us were girls are sitting on the table and through the double doors Joanna Lumley comes right strolling along didn't she do you remember this yes. comes walking comes walking towards us yet yeah, gets and not until she gets up to us she, she goes she, oh fuck me I'm in the wrong room and turns around and walks out again. It was just like, look at you, it was just amazing. Amazing. That's so amazing. I was only thinking about that today. We, again, another thing you take for granted because the rehearsal rooms at the BBC were just legendary. Uh -huh. They were like six floors of lot, always full. Each yeah. floor had like two sports hall type rooms. Mm -hmm. And there was always amazing things going on, like Darling Bud May or Absolutely Fabulous or Julian mm -hmm. Clary. And Joan Collins was there once. Yeah. William yeah. Defoe. Oh, we could get out of the green yeah. room. And it was just so full of all these people that we took and everyone at, at the same time at lunch because there was nowhere else to eat nearby so all these are uh, incredibly famous people and us we, we weren't famous they were you know what, what what it was just incredible it was a real who's who as was the bbc and do you remember when we used to play knock down ginger in between filming we go oh, look there's mel mel gibson knock him, <laughs> come out we, we played away. knock down ginger on ronnie corbett's door bruce forsyth yeah, lived it around the white seat. I remember that. Yeah, proper. I never thought we were in our twenties. <laughs> <laughs> I was older, but the hotel and the hotel break was down in Bristol was legendary. Swallow, really. wasn't it? The Swallow. I mean, I, one of my memories is getting up for very early filming and coming out only to see Kathy Murphy coming in from a night. <laughs> <laughs> then she was half an hour. <laughs> 
I'm awesome. getting it all today. I'm getting a different. I won't watch the. the it sounds like an episode of Shameless as opposed to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the thing we all did really get on, didn't we, Pete? We, we just all really <laughs> got on. Which absolutely. Is really what touch now, do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's brilliant. I would like yeah. to ask everyone, when you think back to your time on the show in general, what stands out as kind of the funniest moment? Now, that could be something that happened backstage or during filming, because it sounds like there was there are a lot of uh, fun oh, memories. So, so, many. so starting with Vicky, what stands out for you as something that was just hilarious when you think back to your time? OK, so a couple of things said that. Well, one, but I remember I've got a whole photo album that includes all of us. And we when we, it was a lunchtime... And we went round and did like poses and stuff using all of that, the furniture and the props and everything, and then the cameras and all this, you know, all that. And I've got a whole album of that. It was just absolutely at priceless gold. And I also remember that everybody were being really supportive when I had to sing, because as as I know that remember I was so petrified of, of singing that I, I nearly fainted. And everybody like really came together and was so so lovely. Um, and, I and remember others. what song it was as well, Vic. What? Well, go on. It was the boy, the boy I love was up in the gallery. Oh. Yes. yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So things like that, and, you know, and just and forming a great friendship with Pete. Do you know what I mean? You know, and then he, he beat the crap out of me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> My boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? So, you know. And I loved him so much. Yeah, I did it, you know. So, yeah, little things like that. I don't know. Over to somebody else. You go. Well, well uh, for you, Judy, what stands out when you when you think back to your time on the show as something uh, really funny? Oh, really? <laughs> it's always hard when somebody says that. Would really be funny. Really, um, really funny. Really, really funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I always remember just uh, when, you, when you're doing like you're filming like all day and you're starting really early, it's, the day goes on, you get tired, and that's when you get giggly. And it's just awful because you're really trying to concentrate. And just something, it's always something silly that sets you off, isn't it? Because, well, I used to always just laugh because Kath is, I don't know what I'm saying this, Kathy, but Kathy's a bit short. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we'd often film this and she'd be on a box and it would just make me laugh. I don't know if you sat on a box. And she, she would like ruin bits of really lovely old fabric. Yes, I remember that. Especially when she was, thought she was going blind in the series and it just turned out to need glasses. <laughs> So it would just be like, oh, it's going to be like, it's really antique lace or beading. <laughs> and then there was one episode where I um, I left my husband and went off with Charles, the cotter, it was that good. And we ended up in your house, didn't we, Kathy? We turned up in the middle of the night and you were making a bed up for us. And um, it was like the last scene of the day. And we had to get, because everyone wanted to go home. It was probably about 10 o'clock, Kathy, or something like that. And... Uh, uh, Bill Thomas, who was playing uh, Charles, had to knock this statue off, and it was just I, I, but every time we just got the giggles, didn't we? Every time he knocked this statue off, and you'd go, "Me fairing, me fairing," didn't you? I don't the word fairing just started us laughing. I don't know why. And we got told off, didn't we? They came down. Oh, they came down. The Jutsu came down and made it times worse. He came um, down, and shouted at us. <laughs> <laughs> It just made it worse. We just could, we got hysterical, hadn't we? We just got absolutely hysterical. And it, the worst, the more you try, it's like being back at school, you know, and you, you know, I used to get caned at school all the time for giggling. <laughs> and, and they say, I'll cane you again if you don't stop. But so it was, it was just a bit like that, really. <laughs> I yeah, actually watched that episode today. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Could you I tell? Can, I'll clean mine up. Oh, up. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, there was a character called Florence who was head of the workshop or something who got knocked down by a car. And we were all standing around going, oh, oh, and Tilly said, <laughs> quick, Joseph, kiss her while she's warm. Except she <laughs> kiss her. Yes, she said kiss. That was it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my, I think that's probably my biggest laugh. <laughs> I actually text Vicky about um, it played by Maggie, wasn't she? And she's quite a na not a very nice character at all, especially to to Tilly. Um, so yeah, I actually text uh, Vicky saying that I wasn't a fan of the um, of the character. Maggie um, Orange, sure, yeah, yeah Maggie, yeah. yeah. Well, a Aiden, what about for you? I mean, if you think back to your time, is there anything that stands out as a kind of a funny moment for you? 
Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I laugh easily as well. But uh, the worst one, without a doubt, and I, I there's just two very bad ones, and I feel desperately ashamed. And please, maybe he's watching. This is my way of atoning. But there was a guy playing a doctor, and he didn't really have to do He just had a very bad accident on the M4. <laughs> he came into rehearsals, sort of, you know, with, I don't know if you remember, uh, but he had, you know, he's virtually in traction. Uh, um, and I don't think he'd been working a lot. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. It's the God. Worst, worst thing. And, and I do laugh easily. And, and it's that, he, my sister was ill or something. And, and, you know, of course she's not ill. She's fine. We'd just seen her up in the cafe and we'd all gone the piss the night before. But she gets into the bed and tries to look poorly. And the doctor comes up to me and says, you know, and he's had a, an appalling accident, the actor. And he comes up and says, oh, you know, I think she'll live or something. And it, pff, helpless, helpless. <laughs> I never, I don't, I mean, they had to cobble it together. I just laughed and laughed and laughed. I mean, pathetic. It wasn't that funny. But I think it was the fact that this guy had had a bad accident himself. And Francesca looked like she could do the 100 metres and beat, you know, you say bolt. Um, uh, it was it was dreadful, and I feel oh I've never seen that guy act since, and maybe I've finished his career. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he might be oh, watching God. now. I don't... He's on the phone. And there was an opera singer. I don't know if you ever, ever any of you remember the opera singer. She was a real famous opera singer. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Joan, someone plow, not Joan, plow, Joan someone plow right. Louise Plowright. Louise, yes, of course you do. Yeah, Louise Plowright, yeah. Well, okay, I'll say it was her. But anyway, they got us in the posh, that very posh, um, the pump rooms in Bath. Bath, yeah. And because she's a proper opera singer, she didn't rehearse. She, she didn't, you know, she was saving the voce. Uh, quite right, you know. And, and, and they packed the extras in and they put me and Louis, Louise laughs easily. Stella, not so much, but Louise laughs like that. And I do as well. And we were, you know, and it's fine. She, we know she's an opera singer. She's a famous woman. But they put us very close to her, very close, and no rehearsal. And then the cameras go on her, no! and, and it's <laughs> inches away from us. And Louise went, Louise went like that. And I, oh my God, we're just laughing in her face as she's. <laughs> going. No, it's not good. You Again, I apologize to you. I apologize unreservedly to you, opera singer. <laughs> We're hearing it all today. I'm loving it. Great stories. What about for you, Pete? What stands out? Because um, you're in a, a small handful of episodes. Uh, yeah, and course, I, was in, I... I was in about four or five episodes. And um, so obviously I don't have the kind of the, the back history of all lots of anecdotes. And stuff. Actually, I found a picture. I wonder if you can see this. This is my character. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him. And um, uh, I... It was quite intense. And also, I, I was working, a lot, doing a lot of telly at that time. I was sort of switching from jobs to jobs. And one thing I found when I joined the House of Elliot uh, group, it was, it was very kind of chick heavy, as we say. It was like 90% women. And I wasn't used to productions where it was 90% women. So it, it was a completely different energy to the, to the very kind of male, macho kind of uh, sort of scenarios that are usually around film sets and TV sets. And it was completely different. And I really liked it because they were just all really, really co colourful characters and stuff. And um, I just tend to remember it was quite, we, we played quite hard, I, I seem to remember, especially when we were Bristol, because they were long days and stuff. And But <laughs> after filming, you know, we, we did, um, we did sort of used to have quite a few libations. I remember the, 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 the director on our, um, bits, Vicky. I think was it Graham, Graham Harper or something. Yeah, oh. Graham, remember Graham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he was a fantastic blues harmonica player. And I just remember sitting in in, in the hotel um, that we were staying in in Bristol. You know, up until about like six, seven o'clock in the morning, but probably waiting for Kathy to come home. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, but it, he was just, he was just, we were just drinking tequila and stuff, and he was playing blues harmonica. I, I was just so impressed. I was so impressed, and it was nice because it was a relief. Because I was a bit nervous with my part because my character beats the crap out of Vicky, and um, I'd and had I had a few him. Mates. I yeah, loved him with all my heart. <laughs> but I was a lovable rogue. But the thing was. You know, I'd had a few mates in TV and film that had, uh, had had, you know, kind of very demanding roles as far as the public's perception of them were, you know, like rapists or paedophiles or even gay or, or whatever. And they got a really tough time, especially if they were in soap operas. 
um, because, you know, some of the public couldn't really differentiate the difference between the characters and, and the actors. And, yeah. um, you know, th th some of, you know, some of my friends, I'm not going to go into who it was, but, you know, been attacked and whatever for their roles in, uh, in t high profile TV stuff. And I was a bit nervous, you know, because I was giving Vicky a clump every now and again that somebody wouldn't realise is acting. So um, I did feel a bit uh, about it, but um, luckily there was no kind of negative feedback. So, you know, it, it was all right. But, um, but yeah, it was a fantastic. I loved it. I loved every minute because the girls were such a laugh. They were, they were such a laugh. Like, thoroughly enjoyable experience, yeah. Well, and and can... I got beaten up three other times as well, so it was fine. Yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> yeah. And, I, yeah. and they can see there's yeah. lots of love, lots of love with you both today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I, I Literally, I've only really managed to keep in touch with Vicky. I literally haven't seen the rest of the characters since 1995 or whatever. So it's a bit, it's a bit strange to see them all now. Well, Kathy, uh, what about for you? It seems like you're going to have a, a lot of moments to, to pick from, but what stands out as a funny moment for you? <laughs> You know what? All of it, all of it was, was, I can't, I can't, I mean, and there's some, I remember when I was pregnant in it and I had this big belly and it was very realistic. And do you remember there were builders there at, at the BBC at the time? <laughs> and at the time I smoked. So I was smoking <laughs> and with this big belly and they were like nudging each other. Look at, so, I, so we got onto that and we thought it was really funny if I do yeah. handstands and, and, <laughs> <got these puppies>. and <laughs> cartwheels and they were disgusted. <laughs> they were like, Look at her. Great. I mean, it was just us. That <laughs> lockdown ginger was amazing. Was like, we couldn't wait to finish filming. We'd have like an hour left. We'd get Judy. She was the worst. And we'd go, you, the one who'd actually knock down. And we'd go find the most famous person at the BBC. <laughs> It's all circular, isn't it? All the, the dressing rooms are all circular. Yeah. And we knock on it. That was great fun. All Love of it. it. I mean, all of it. And, and you're right. It was very female led. Mm. which is kind of unusual, which is really unusual it's, yeah. you know, to have so many women. And I think we were very accommodating. I, I, I like to think, I think we all agree on this, that, that um, when new people came in, they felt at home. I really want, I really, we all I hope so. I really wanted people to enjoy their time on it. You know, so when they'd come to the read through, they wouldn't feel, you know, they'd feel like this is a giggle. This, this, this job is fun. Mm. We're going to have fun while doing it. Because it's read throughs and a new job are horrible. Mm. Yeah. And I think they're just, they're awful. They never get any easier. And I just think we all wanted everyone to have And, and also, we, we had some great guest stars, didn't we? I'm going to... Mini Driver. Yeah. Mini Driver, Andy Valentine, Burke Guap. I mean, just so many. Mm -hmm. That's just... And, uh, Phila Delore. Phila Delore, Jane Birkin's mum. Yeah. So, uh, uh, there's wonderful... I mean, we, yeah, we had some amazing... Phila Delore was fantastic. Real yeah. fun. Yeah. Burke Guap's a lovely guy, isn't he? He was. Yeah, and he nice coming place, out of yeah. the cupboard, didn't he? Doing the thing, we kept making him do that. He <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 <laughs> ah. I mean, Kathy, I think you touched upon it earlier uh, about the ending of the show, uh, and it, it's a very odd, I mean, when you watch the last episode, you're waiting for the next one to come, because it was mm. right at a, a cliffhanger, and it was, it almost felt to me when I watched it that maybe there were more episodes that were due to air that, that were scrapped, because it just didn't make sense for the ending, so what are your thoughts, because I know with the series there were, uh, the storylines at times repeated himself in a sense of there were competition for the Elliot sisters, they overcome it, competition overcome it, etc. But it, it, it felt like it had legs for another series. So what, you know, what, what do you all think of that? Well, it was, it was, uh, it, it was the girls on it. I think that we didn't really have much say. Am I right in saying that gang that, I mean, I don't think Stella and Louise wanted to go forward. Was that right? No, I mean, I think because I've met some years after, after we finished, I found myself uh, as a neighbour to one of the writers, Chris, uh, what's her name, Chris, anyway, she was one of the writers who said we we just wanted to do more of the downstairs characters and we said at one point it was suggested that we did a series just on those of us below stairs. Oh, I wish they had it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish they had, but she said, oh, you know, we got, said some of us writers got tired oh you know another episode with oh 
you know, and this will tell you how things have changed. Oh, we're so over budget. Let's have another um, showroom um, fashion parade and then we can spend money on lots of lovely frocks. Oh, well, there you go. But do we, I don't actually know why it ended, though. Do we, do we ever get a reason? I don't... I mean, I thought it's good, like the yeah, way it's said, it's like, yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, of course it was that. There was some wrangling at the time about the, the, that wasn't there. The girls wanted to do one big Christmas special, and the kind of deal was no, that to no to that, you either do another series or no Christmas special. So it was no. kind of open ended in case it ever. But I do remember thinking it was quite unfair to people who watched it to have these awful. I don't. I mean, yeah. my story was really open. All of ours were open ended, yeah. weren't they? You know, and then for it to yeah. just disappear must have been strange. Mm -hmm. And at mm. the time, I was saying it, it is so odd. I know there were only four channels then, so it's very different. But you know, we got regularly audience of like twenty million, mm -hmm. and something mm -hmm. because there were four channels, you, you, you know. But the, the audience was huge for it. But, yeah. You know, mm -hmm something you take for granted but you know they, they were pretty big audiences yeah good i mean uh, i say with the last episode it was literally the two sisters disagreeing and that it's never been left on a cliffhanger like that because they used to sort things out you know because they had such a strong bond but it ended with um you know they're, they're both wanting different things and it's nice in a sense where we kind of, as a viewer, we have an image of what could have been. So maybe Tilly's living a happy life, maybe Madge is happy. You know, it's that kind of um, kind of thing. But yeah, it was disappointing. It would have been nice to have more. But I mean, for, for you, um, Aidan, when the, the character became a, an MP, didn't he? His career completely changed. He went from <laughs> filmmaking to, to politics. There was this camera somewhere in a car. <laughs> 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 I don't remember being an MP. You're right, I think I finished <laughs> up being an MP. Yeah, I mean, what? You did, you were an MP. I was an MP, wasn't I? Yes. You, yeah. Was I any good? Louise had an affair with another with an MP, didn't she? Um, Louise. Uh, Evangeline, not Louise. Eva not in real life, no, not Louise Long. Not Evangeline. Life. Didn't she? She had, a, with, she had an affair with your friend who was an MP. Yeah. What, um, the guy from Empire of the Sun? Hmm? <laughs> the, the older, the older man? Yes, yeah, and she... Was he an MP? Yeah, she took him for dinner at the House of Parliament. Yes. You don't remember any of this, Adrian, do you? <laughs> I, don't, I think I do remember that because I was late for filming, which is disgraceful, <laughs> but I got caught up in Cheltenham and, uh, and, I, and, and uh, yeah, I was late. So I do remember that, that meal. Um, but I don't remember him being an MP at all. I don't remember myself being an MP. <laughs> <laughs> he was elected at, at every... I mean, normally in a reunion, um, most people have stories they remember. I think this is the first time we've spoke to anybody that doesn't remember an entire episode of the show that they were in. This is a first. I don't remember an entire series of it. Yeah, it's not an episode. <laughs> I think that's a sign I certainly of don't the remember, the, I don't do remember it being a photographer because they, I had this camera that was a nightmare. You have to sort of, you know, disappear and and then they'd worry about your hair afterwards. And I, I, I think that's why they stopped me being a photographer. They were, they were you know, it's just too complicated. Yeah. It was a long time ago, though, Lewis, in our yeah, defence and Aidan's defence. But they just showed it all again on Talking Pictures, the channel Talking Pictures. Did they? Oh. Yeah, they showed about, I don't know, about a year ago, they showed the whole thing, yeah. I think it's on an loop somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I love about the show is, uh, I mean, you mentioned Cheltenham, and that's where I live, and the locations in the show were beautiful. You see some amazing grounds and houses, and especially for, for you, Aidan, a lot of the scenes that you uh, were in were in beautiful locations. So is there anywhere that stands out? Well, I don't know. No. <laughs> Maybe not, but is there anywhere that stands out as the most enjoyable Yeah, the bar, the bar at the Hilton, I remember very well. <laughs> <laughs> Hilton in Bristol, no. yeah. Um, yeah, there was actually, there was a, there was this lovely place, I think it's called Frampton Mansell, or if it isn't, it's very close to that. Uh, and uh, I think I, you know, I'd break up or I'd make up with B there. Uh, and they had these, um, they had this big lake and they had these tame otters. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, filming is quite a boring <laughs> process most of the time, but to have these tame otters around, really help pass the time. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I mean, the, the rest of you didn't really get to see any nice locations because you, you never got the chance to really go outside and, and to any of those beautiful places. It was kind of in the, the workroom for, for you. Do you feel short changed? Oh, no, we did, we did um, a lot of nice places. We got to go to Bath because we did a few of the fashion shows, you know, that you know, yeah. we were helping. We um, yeah, yeah. Barclay Square, wasn't it? Barclay Square, yeah. 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 Now, the, the question that I'd love to ask you all, um, which is the standout scene for you. So, when you think back to your time on the show, that the scene that stands out as the most enjoyable and the you know the standout one. So, starting with Stephen, is there one for you that you always kind of have fond memories of when you think back to the show? Well, there was a little sequence, and there was a character called Larry Cotter who, at the beginning of the episode, Joseph's walking along and sees his shop and looks in and realizes that one of the dresses as a copy, a rip-off of the House of Elliot one. He hails a taxi and says, House of Elliot, as fast as you can. <laughs> it's Elliot, they're copying. So that was a nice little sequence I always remember. And I House of Elliot, as soon as possible. I remember that. That was when um, he was paying um, a bit of commission to the, the buying team. Uh, yes. to, to Ian, sell. Redford. Ian Redford. Ian Redford, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you came to the rescue. And that was the great thing about your character. He was so loyal and full of integrity. You know, he didn't have a bad bone in his body. And the, the sisters had so much trust in him because he never let them down. Um, you know, that he was the great thing. He became a director or something. It was what, the sorry? Last he became a director or something. Yeah. yeah. He did. He, he... Um, now, for Madge, um, the character, so many people, when we made the announcement that we're doing this reunion, everyone went nuts because they want to imagine what Madge did next. So if you, <laughs> so what do you think Madge would be doing now, if, if you had, had to guess? Well, um, I, maybe, I, well, she met, because um, she was in an unhappy marriage when we met, met her with, with uh, Jamie Foreman, who we were chatting about. Yeah. And um, she met, Bill Thomas, who played Charles, and uh, he was the cutter, and um, and that was one of my. I was talking about scenes. That was a. I loved my scenes with Bill because I, I never usually play romantic part. You know, with romance. It was nice. And I remember him offering me his plums in the in the, in the square, <laughs> <laughs> which were very juicy. I remember saying. And um, and then we had tea together. And we had crumpets. So it was quite a food based relationship. And then, <laughs> And then what I like to think is that maybe well, she was a good sewer and he was a good cutter. Maybe they set up their own little little business, House of Match, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and Tilly maybe was a director. I don't know the company. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. And Vicky maybe oh, <laughs> just sang for the customers. I don't know. <laughs> That's a spin-off series waiting to happen there, House of Match. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, you, Vicky? What what would Agnes be doing now? Was she oh. going to be the singing sensation, selling yeah, albums? Yeah, she'd be she'd be she'd be singing "Bless Us Still" at the Acne Empire and and still looking for those buttons, wouldn't she? Bless her heart, <laughs> still looking for a button. <laughs> exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I don't think she would have gone far. I think maybe she's e she was easily led. Bless her. So I think I'm not sure if the career would have worked out because I think she would have probably got stung by another kind of Percy kind of type of guy. I don't think she was very lucky in love, but um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Best of all. And Kathy, what about what? What could we have seen Tilly do in years ago? What? What? Where do you see Tilly being? I think she would have ended up with Norman definitely, and then have got over it and and had a lovely life. Or was yeah. That's what I think for Tilly and Norman. He was lovely. He was lovely to act with, and, and to at Toby's and 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 Toby Whithouse was lovely, and and uh, yeah, I think they'd be together. And Stephen, what what about Joseph? Where would we? What would he be doing now if you if you had to take a guess? So where do you envision the character being? I think in a very uh, successful but dull career, doing the same sort of thing, really, accountancy. 
with that dull wife. I think we did meet the wife. <laughs> <laughs> What's she called, Susan? Didn't the end of the corridor or something. What did no, she have a name? Dull what was she called your wife? Name? What? Didn't you what share did you a want? name? What was your wife's name in it? No idea. <laughs> Didn't you used to mention her? <laughs> I don't, I don't I remember. I no idea what you were name. drinking with Aidan from <laughs> <laughs> and Aidan, what, what about where, where would Jack be now? Because he was a man of many uh, talents and had a different career every series. So where would he be now when you think back? He'd still be an MP, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, what, what's left? What's left for him to do? I, I think they, they tried everything and didn't, nothing seemed to stick. Um, I, I don't know, really. Um, you could have got a job on people just missed the memory. I have to take the word that he was. Um, <laughs> Prime Minister? There we go. <laughs> um. What um, were you a, 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 a MP for? Conservative Party? Labour. Labour? No, I was Labour. I was very left-wing. I was oh, very right. left-wing. You made a film about the strikers. Yes, you did. I did a really, quite a dull one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do um, ask a question for all of you do you if it ever comes on tv or um repeated do you sit down to watch it when you're in the show or is that a kind of a surreal thing that you tend not to do I, i've watched it since because it's so long ago i find it oh it warms my heart when i see it, it cracks me up because i can then remember it sparks my memory going oh my god i remember what happened after that Back, you know, behind the scenes sort of thing. So yeah, I, I watch it with fondness because it's you know it's it's so so long ago. And Stephen, do you, no. do you watch it as well <laughs> if, it, if it comes on? It, yeah, if, if it. The thing is, I'm always hypercritical because I've since House Lovely, I've written a lot for television. So and those things I used to write it on frequently. And if it's on, I always flick on to think I could have. God, that line's terrible. I could have done that, and I do the same. No, I haven't watched it really. Um, I've got them all on tape. I mean, but I'm not going to sit there like what's her name? Um, what's her name? Oh, uh, Sunset sort of Boulevard, watching uh, her old films, Gloria Swanson. I'm not one of those. I always remember, Vicky, um, I think it's one of your first scenes in the workhouse where, because over time you became. Um, well, in the first bit, you were like, to me, a blouse is just a blouse, and she's really uh, loud, jumper, really jump, cockney. No, a jumper's a jumper, a blouse is a blouse. What do they mean, jumper, blouse? That was the first <laughs> one. Don't remember that still, yeah. She was the, she wasn't the brightest Agnes, but I loved her. I loved her. And then yeah. you had Madge, which, when Madge needed to, she could have that authority. You know, she was oh. able to tell people off, but she still had the big heart. She... You know, she cared about the workers and she had a lot of loyalty. And that was a nice thing about Madge. She wasn't too power hungry. She was she was genuine. No, but I did I did um I did cheat on them once because then I got sacked and then they brought me back. Because in the end of the first episode I did a bit of moonlighting. Oh uh, sure, yeah. Yeah. And then I wasn't very nice to Florence Rambi because remember it was about a bit of fur collar. Do you remember, Kathy? We, we patched it up. <laughs> Because we'd ironed it. Oh, that was another funny one. We had to burn the fur. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I think she. Uh, yeah, I think she was more mod. Yeah, she. She. I don't know. But yeah, she was a stickler. For, even though she did like a couple of naughty things, she was very loyal in the end. Yeah. Well, maybe this reunion will get the BBC to give us the answers we want and bring you all back and see where you are now and, and, and what happened. Give us some of the answers that we've waited 28 years to, to hear. Um, um, we were saying yesterday, I, I got some snippets somewhere, that apparently The House of Elliot is George Bush's favourite show. <laughs> really? Bizarre, I know. How bizarre is that? His, his wife said he likes to watch it to calm himself down, get away from politics. <laughs> Um, there you go. So he might like it if they make another another <laughs> one after 28 years. That's surreal, isn't it? <laughs> well, I got I got a call from Jeffrey Rush, who's a he's a huge fan, and he came yeah. he sent to see Mary Poppins, and and he came back afterwards, and I was told Jeffrey Rush wants to see you, and I thought, mm. Christ, you know, I must have been better than mediocre for once, <laughs> and. Uh, 
but it wasn't to do with that. He wanted, he got, he got Louise and Stella's signature and he wanted mine. And, uh, and, and fine, whatever. And I, I did think it was built, but he, he actually started spouting off the names of the collections. Do you remember any of the names? Oh. The Aurora collection. And he, he, yes. he, would, he, he and his wife would reenact the collections at home. <laughs> Oh my well, God! It was like a blue yeah, no, he, wasn't there a blue a blue on to do with blue? What's, oh, no, I do remember that. I remember there was something to do with, with blue and and um, influenced by S Sonia Delaunay. I remember. Do you remember that? Well, I do. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> but midnight blue. Do you not remember? It was all about blue. Yeah, midnight blue. Midnight blue. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember sure. the dancers. Do you remember the dancers one? That was almost un, 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 impossible not to laugh. Do you remember the dancers doing the... No? Maybe I hallucinated. Maybe that was in the... Fashion show, yes. It was a fashion show with dancers, wasn't there? Yeah. Was it influenced yeah. by the ballet, that one? Yeah, there was always a theme. Yeah, ballet yeah. theme. Kath, where were you? Yeah. What? <laughs> I was out on a day all night. I don't remember. <laughs> Well, I've got to say a massive thank you to you all for coming on and just reminiscing about your time in the show. I know it was, I mean, this is the, the longest kind of reunion we've done in the sense of the show being so long ago. Oh. Um, and I, I know people are going to love this because to see you all back sharing, I mean, I never would have imagined that you would all be knocking on Ronnie Corbett's door, then running away. So that's a story that I never <laughs> thought would come out of today. <laughs> I was pushed into it. I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I'm okay, I think I recall you going to the Claire. Come on. Yeah, come that, on. Led, that, that led me astray. I, honestly. A <laughs> labour. <laughs> that was my best. No, my best memory is not down to It was the best. <laughs> we're going to have celebrities coming out speaking out on Twitter now saying that they were victim of having their door knocked on by you guys. <laughs> But no, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. The fans are really going to love this. So thank you for coming on, sharing your stories and, and reuniting. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Very well. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye.